Bonjour. Hello, Year 7. I hope you are doing well. I am doing a little PowerPoint to accompany Lesson 1 in Work Pack 6, which is all about how to build sentences in French and um, moreover, how to build them in a way that allows us to show off all of our knowledge um, and really get the top marks. Um, and also how to um, make sure that we don't need to use Google Translate and we have the confidence in building sentences ourselves. So you might want to have the work pack in front of you and you might want some scrap paper to make some notes. OK, so let's make a start. So we're going to look at um, this following question, which might look like quite a lot, but you will see um, questions like those a lot more in the future. And the question is, que fais-tu quand il y a du soleil? OK, so this one here, to give you a little hint, is what do you do when it's sunny? So it's quite an open question. It wants you to use some of the activities that you have learned in year seven um, and maybe give an opinion as well. So when you are faced with that question, it might be quite easy to just give a really straightforward, simple answer, such as je joue au tennis. OK, so simply I play tennis. Now, yes, the answer is OK. You've used a verb correctly. Um, you've used a sport. Tennis is quite nice because it's the same um, as it is in English. But the intention of this um, PowerPoint and this video is to show you how you can show off all of the work that you've done in the last year and make your answers more individual to you and make them more interesting and more complex and also more likely to get you more marks. So we're going to look at how you can do that. Um, and the image that we're going to use is the image of a pyramid. So we're going to look at expanding our sentence into something that has lots and lots of bits of information. So I'm going to we're going to look at the same question. Que fais-tu quand il y a du soleil? So what do you do when it's sunny? And we're going to look at how you can build your sentences in a way that turns them into something quite amazing. So we're going to start from the top of the pyramid in this case. Um, because what we want to do is rather than just give you know the answer right at the top, we want to make sure we've got proper basis of our sentences. So the first thing you might want to do is kind of reflect the question back. So to say when you are doing something. So the question asks you, what do you do when it's sunny? Que fais-tu quand il y a du soleil? Now what you might do is a nice little trick is to use part of the question to start your answer, which is what this person has done here. So, quand il y a du soleil basically means when it is sunny. Then the next thing you're going to do is you have to say who is doing something. So um, most often that is going to be je, I. So quand il y a du soleil, je. Now, it's very important you pay attention to this next part, because what we are going to do, we always want you to add opinions into your writing, into your sentences. Um, and I'm going to show you a way that you can do that right at the beginning of the sentence and kind of tick that off the list. So, quand il y a du soleil, je turns into j'aime. OK, hopefully you remember that j'aime means I like because it is um, M starts with an A, so two vowels, we need to shorten that to j'aime. The next thing we're going to do then is we're going to say the activity or the thing that we are doing or that we like to do. So that means we're going to add to it. So we might say here, j'aime jouer, which is I like to play. OK, um, so make sure that you really pay attention to this part here. I've kind of highlighted it as well because we're going to look at um, a couple of things that you need to remember. Nice thing here is you're not just saying when it is sunny, I like or when it is sunny, I play. You're saying when it is sunny, I like to play. So you've got your opinion in there straight away. So the next thing is going to be, well, what do you like to play? So j'aime jouer au tennis. I like to play tennis. OK, so now we're going into extra bits of information that 
based on what you've learned in your seven, you should try and use as much as you can. So always include those words in there. So next thing is going to be who with. OK, so if you're saying you're playing tennis, why not say who you play it with? So in this example, we've got j'aime jouer au tennis avec mes amis. Avec mes amis or mes copains is with your friends. And then we're going to add an extra bit of information, which is where. So where are we doing these activities? So in this case, we've got j'aime jouer au tennis avec mes amis or park. So at the park. And then again, if you've already expressed an opinion at the top in the red box there, then that's great. But you want to give a justified opinion. So you want to say why you like to play tennis with your friends in the park. So that means we're going to conclude our sentence now. I've brought back the quand il y a du soleil, so when it is sunny, which takes us to the following sentence. Quand il y a du soleil, j'aime jouer au tennis au parc avec mes amis parce que c'est amusant. So the last part there, the last line is because it is fun. So you've given a reason why you like doing this. So it's very important that we're just going to look at um, a little trap, as I like to call it, before we move on to looking at these um, extended sentences. So the first one is that you need to be very um, careful with the verb ending when you add an opinion to your activity. So I'm talking about the example of I like to play or I love to do, I love to see, whatever it might be. So look at the difference in the following phrases for me. So we've got here, j'aime jouer versus je joue. Okay, so both of them have something to do with playing, but um, one of them has got an opinion added to it and one of them has not. So we have here on the left, I like to play. Okay, so in English, what we do is after we say I like to do something whenever we have a verb that we have to in front of that means it's the infinitive so that's the form um, of the verb that we find in the dictionary in french we haven't got something like to but what we do instead is we have the ending at the end so you've got here um, your er okay remember there's lots of wor um, verbs there's a group of verbs in french that ends in er in its infinitive form so this here is I like to play on the left. On the right, you have got je joue, okay, which simply means I play. So what you're doing here is you're saying that you do something or you play something, but you're not expressing the opinion that you like to do this. In that case, whenever um, we have a verb that is er um, in its infinitive and we want to add je to the front, so say that we do it, we have we take off the ER ending and we add the E. So make sure that you practice the difference between them when you want to use those. You need to be very aware of those. The next trap we're going to look at is the following. So we are looking at j'adore aller versus je vais. Now, first look, these two verbs that are underlined, so aller, and there don't seem to have anything in common however they do in fact mean the same thing in english so the first sentence on the left is i love to go so that means that ali here on the left is the infinitive so to go versus je vais which is i go Aller is what we call an irregular verb. That means that um, we have to learn this one. So we have to recognize that to go is aller and I go is completely, looks completely different. So that's je vais. So whether you love to go to school or whether you're saying I go to school is obviously very different because in one sentence you're expressing an opinion and in the other you're just stating a fact. So make sure that you practice the difference between them and prove read your work as well to make sure that you haven't fallen into one of these traps. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to continue with the translation practice, but um, these are the sentences taken straight from your work pack. So I'm going to read them out. So if you want to have a little bit of a listening practice as well, 
um, feel free to use it in that way. Um, and I'm going to show you the answers in a minute. So we're going to start off with translating from French into English. And then the second part of the task is from English into French. So first sentence is Quand il pleut, j'aime regarder des films avec ma famille chez moi parce que c'est génial. Quand il pleut, j'aime regarder des films avec ma famille chez moi parce que c'est génial. So this is very similar to the previous practice sentence that we translated, but there are a couple of differences here. So a couple of these W um, points or the W parts of your sentence have changed here. So this translates to when it rains or when it's raining. I like to watch or I like watching either works films with my family at mine. So um, chez moi, it means at mine, at my house, because it's great. OK, and now the second sentence is actually expressing a negative opinion. So make sure you look at the je n'aime pas part and you translate it um, accurately and carefully. So second sentence is le soir, je n'aime pas faire mes devoirs avec mes parents parce que c'est difficile. So again, le soir, je n'aime pas faire mes devoirs avec mes parents parce que c'est difficile. So this would translate to in the evening. I don't like to do or I don't like doing. The important part is the I don't like. I don't like doing homework with my parents because it's difficult. OK, so well done on those. Um, if you've um, struggled with some of those, you might want to highlight the words that you um, were unsure of. And then um, without having the answers there, try again. Just try again to translate them properly. OK, so we're going to do some translations from English into French next. So here we have two phrases, two sentences. They're quite short. They're not um, a full pyramid as such. Um, but, you know, you could, after you've translated them, you could always have a go at um, kind of decorating them and adding a little bit more to it. Um, they might then become the sentence that you submit to your French teacher from your work pack. So remember, um, the first task in your work pack is to produce your own pyramid sentence using the sentence builder or the knowledge organ, your knowledge organizer, if you like, and um, to submit that to your French teacher via class chats then. So they can give you some feedback on what you might uh, want to target next. So let's have a look at the first sentence, which is on the weekend. I love to go to the cinema with my friends because it's fun. OK, so make sure you pay attention to um, things like, is it I love or I like? Yeah, so you need to make sure that you translate them accurately. Um, who are they going with? Is it friend or friends? So how do we say friends rather than just a friend? Um, and how do we say it's fun? OK, so the first sentence would be le weekend. J'adore aller. So this is the important part here is that you remember it that I love to go. So we need the infinitive, which for to go is one that we have to learn in French because it's a bit of a challenge. So j'adore aller au cinéma avec mes amis. So mes amis would work for my friends or mes copains, which is more like my mates, parce que c'est amusant. OK, and then we've got another sentence underneath. So I'll have a go at that one from English into French, which is sometimes I like to do dance with my sister in the house because it's great. So that will translate to parfois, or you could also use quelquefois. J'aime faire de la danse. So we've got I like to do. So we need to have j'aime faire de la danse avec ma soeur à la maison, which is in the house or at the house, parce que c'est génial. Okay, so you've got two translation examples here. 
Um, again, um, tick or fix your answer. Make sure you keep a, a track, kind of keep record of um, how you've translated, how many goals it might have taken you, um, and take responsibility for your own learning as well. So if you notice that there was a word that you misspelled, you might want to practice that one again, um, especially so here because it has the kind of O and the E that are squashed together, which is a little bit different for us English speakers. OK, so that kind of brings us to the end of um, this PowerPoint. Uh, you have got a couple of tasks um, that are more grammar related in your work pack now, which are all based on the work that you did or the survey, sorry, the um, survey that you did for Miss Stevens. Um, and there were a couple of things that you said you wanted to practice a little bit more. So um, they are part of lesson two and there are some answers as well so that you can check your work throughout but please don't go straight to the answers because you want to make sure that you reflect on your work as well and you know kind of what to look at for potential targets for your eight okay so well done keep up the good work you've been um, really fantastic we've had some lovely work submitted so basically just keep doing what you're doing look after yourselves and i hope to see you soon au revoir